Hey guys, here we go again, Monday Life. Um, it's Sammy the Bull and Anna, Amina. My son is here, Amina's daughter is here, so watch your language. Um, and uh, what the hell's his name again? <laughs> he changed his name. He's going in the witness protection program because we had a lot of problems last week. No, no, he's not. He's great. You know, the, we had problems with uh, the weather. I don't know what happened. I don't know none of this tech stuff, so I'm not going to try to explain it. It's crazy for me to do that. So, uh, you know, let's get right to some of the questions. I'm excited, ready to go. Thank you, Sammy. Actually, I'm going to start with a couple of emails that you had received. Um, the first one is from Shane Dankowski. He said, good morning. I was just browsing the site. I'm a huge fan of Sammy. I relate to him a lot. In fact, we've had similar paths. I was involved in a gang war. We did a murder. I ended up cooperating at the end. I did my sentence and WP as well. I have so much love for Sammy and everything he's done. I listened right up until every episode of his podcast of Our Thing. I find myself, I have a book that is coming out in all major bookstores this year, just about my life, my story. My father was murdered in front of me when I was six, and from there my life went downhill. I stopped school at grade five, sold drugs my whole life. I've been shot, buried 13 friends in a year, lost my wife and two sons, got addicted to heroin, but I've since got clean, finished my parole, got married, and have two daughters. I'm hoping to send Sammy a copy of my book if he'd had one. I'm sure my story won't reach Sammy, but I want him to know that I'm a huge fan and I support him and love him so much. And that's, and that's an unbelievable story. It just touched my heart a little bit. I mean, um, and uh, your comeback in life, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you that you came back. And yes, yeah, send me your book. I would love to read it. And, and, and uh, you're doing a great job. Stay strong, stay safe, stay out of trouble. You got. You sounds like you're a man's man, and you have a good life ahead of yourself. And uh, yeah, send me the book. Uh, thank you for the letter, and uh, I appreciate you. Uh, believe me, maybe more than you appreciate me. Perfect. Okay, we're going to jump into a couple of questions. I'll first start out with the shout-outs from last week. We're going to give shout-outs to Connie, because she gave you um, an envelope, Connie Gunn and Gilbert Goobies Castro. Envelopes, just saying hello to you and the staff. Love the show. Love you guys. I really do. I okay. appreciate it. Um, so, uh, I love you guys. Elgato wants to know, Sammy, salute. Did you ever steal any Ataris, Nintendos, etc. back in the day? <laughs> Those things were super expensive. Grazie. No, I, I never stole shit like that. I mean, I no, I never stole stuff like that, stuff like that. I'm a gangster, and then and I believe this is his name. What's his name? Elgato. 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 Did you steal my girlfriend, <laughs> Betty Ann? Because I th I think you guys are uh, <laughs> hanging out, and that's good. She's a good person. You're a good man. Uh, I wish you the best. Uh, may you name your first son after me, Little Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> we have Curtis Fogel Sanger. Hi, Sammy. Sending love from Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. I have a question. Did you ever have any dealings with the Pittsburgh family? Your biggest fan, Kurt. No, I really didn't have any. Uh, I knew they existed. They were a pretty good family from everything I understand, but I, I never had any you know, contact or relationships with, it, with them. Okay, we have um, Easy. He said, did the captain in the Gambino family that Paul Castellano let be killed by the Genovese deserve to die? No. And uh, his name, I, I, from my memory serves me, was Frank Piccolo. He was a captain in Connecticut. Um, uh, he had an argument with Chen. You know, he was a captain. He's supposed to have a crew, which he had, and he's supposed to represent our family and take care of that area of Connecticut. So he's banging heads with uh, the Genovese family, with Chen. Uh, Chen goes to uh, 
Paul Castellano tells him about it. Now, Paul Castellano and Chin, were, money was flying back and forth from them, enormous amounts of money. Um, so Paul Castellano said if he's a problem for you and he's disrespectful, um, kill him. So he gave a contract to another family to kill a captain in our family. That sent the whole family berserk. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. You're the father of the family. You're supposed to help us, take care of us, protect us. And he did the opposite. Now that was one of the nails in his coffin when stories came up about replacing Castellano. That was one of them. I, I'm going to do this in my new podcast. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Um, but uh, that was one of the things. It was horrible. It was a horrible thing to do. And uh, that was part of his downfall. Um, so let me tell you about the other thing I said. I'll talk to you in a minute. I'll talk to you about this real quick. All you guys who loved my podcast and you're still asking me for it, I'm talking to people right now. I have so much more information uh, from a lot of different people and sources um, and street guys. Uh, I'm going to do a, a remake of our thing, but this time I'm going to do it even better than I did it the last time. If you loved it the last time, you'll go crazy for it this time. They're going to be anywhere between 35 and 40 minutes, like little mini movies, very theatric, a lot of uh, B-roll, and a lot of every fact I can get, facts. Because I got bums out there saying, oh, he's lying in this. I'm going to have documents, court documents, papers, and uh, police, FBI reports, everything. So you're going to love this when we when we start this up again. Perfect. We have Mob Entertainment Group. Did Gotti dry snitch? Like, say, in old crimes on wiretaps. Did he talk about old wire? No, 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 no. He, listen, I have my problems with John Gotti. You all know that. And I don't pull punches. I say what it is, it is. But John Gotti was not a dry snitch. He wasn't a rat. He wasn't a dry snitch. Um, he made mistakes and got caught on tape. Um, but what he did after that by trying to throw the weight onto me and throw the weight onto Frankie Lacasio to beat the case, that's a horrible move. But it's not a snitch move. I mean, some people call it that, but I wouldn't call it that. He's not a snitch. You know, I loved the guy at a point, and I hated him at a point. But I don't want to bullshit uh, because I was wrong and say stuff that's not true. No, he wasn't a dry snitch as far as I'm concerned, no. Okay, thank you. Fat Irish 90. Sammy, did you accept money from Patsy Conti for John and did the money come from heroin dealing? The bullpen is important and real news. Thank you so much. The answer is yes, but let me add to that. Uh, after we took over... Patsy Conti would bring in tons of fucking money to Paul Castellano. Now, I don't know if Paul knew it was drug money because he had some businesses and he had other things. So he, it, Paul may not have known that some of that money came in was from drugs. But John knew it. Some guys knew it. I knew it. So when we took over, he told me, he says, Sammy, Grab this Patsy Conti and tell him, he's giving us a small amount of money that's coming in. Uh, tell him to start giving money like he was giving it to Paul, and we know that he was doing drugs. Give him a tacit approval, in other words, I, I don't know, but uh, you tell him you know, and um, so I guess he was giving me the weight, but I spoke with Patsy Conti, I says, resume that money you were given. And we know where it was coming from. It was coming from Sicily, heroin coming into the country. You have people doing that. Continue doing what you're doing. Don't worry about getting killed or, or anything. Don't ever give John the money. Give me the money. But I'm telling you, he knew how close I was with John. So he knew my approval. I would have never gave my approval without John's approval. So he knew that. He wasn't stupid. And he started bringing in money. So I did collect a few envelopes from him, and I never counted it, but they were thick. And uh, I just handed it over to John. So, and he knew it was drug money, without a doubt. So did I. 
Perfect, thank you. Okay, that's it for questions from last week. Anna, over to you, my dear. Thank you. Hi, Sammy. Hey, my girl. Hi, sweet pea. How you doing Monday? <laughs> I'm doing real good. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we give a shout out to the real Brian Glaze who is in your chat right now? He is firing up this chat like no other. Yeah, that's my that's my man Brian. We became friends quite a while ago. Um, he uh, he had a friend he wanted me to uh, do a, a podcast with to try to help him build up his uh, Terrence Williams. Um, they call him uh, the Black Sammy the Bull, and uh, I did the interview with him. He seemed like a real great guy. He turned his life around, and uh, it's he owes that to to Brian Glaze. Brian Glaze is helping people, and make no mistake about it, that Brian Glaze is a super tough guy, was a tough guy, strong reputation, but an honorable guy. He went away, he came out, I believe he did the same thing I did, flipped, and uh, and uh, he changed his life. And, uh, you know, he's still a tough guy, but he's helping a lot of kids, especially black kids, telling them, you know, you don't have to do this, that, and the other thing. He's a great guy. Uh, he sent me his book. I should be ashamed of myself because I told him I was going to send him my book, and I don't think I did that. Brian, if you're on this show, you're listening, I apologize, my friend. I will send it to you now I'm saying it publicly. Um, I, I, I forgot. But I will send you the book, and uh, I think the world of this guy, and he has a great show. So all the people listening and watching, and he's if he's there now, you're telling me he's there. He has a great show, um, a great guy to listen to. You know, no racist bullshit, no stuff like that. Straight up, straight shooter, good guy, um, and I can't say enough good things about him. I love the guy. It was a great interview. Yeah, we Speaking did. Speaking interviews, the interwebs were all a chatter over the weekend after you rapped with a great, great guy, Anthony Reggiano. Yeah, oh, Anthony's a great guy. You know, I was telling my son this. You know, Anthony heard a lot of things from me that he didn't know. But he knew the other side. He knew Fat Tony was his, uh, Fat Andy was his father. Um, Tony Lee, tough guys, really on the other side. So I started hearing their side and my side. It came together beautifully. So we knew the same story, but we didn't know what each other knew. So when we did this interview, it was great. And I was so comfortable with him. He's a good guy, another tough guy. Um, and we're going to do things in the future. But we did a great show. It's going to come out on table in the back. Uh, we have it done. Uh, we had a good crew. We went to a cigar bar and a whole bunch of things. You're going to love this show, too. And I'm, uh, uh, I talked to him and I told him, uh, uh, Anthony, if you're not doing stuff, you know, he ran gambling things all his life, you know, with his father and stuff like that. So he knows about gambling, he knows about sports, horses, all kinds of stuff. So uh, I always wanted to open up on OurThing.com a sports channel. So I said, you know, he's not married. His daughter is 30 years old, out of college. I don't want to talk about his kids, but um, I said, if uh, if there's an opening for you over here, would you move here? He said, Sammy, I'll come here in, in a minute. I, I, you know, I was with you for a couple of days. I loved it. He told a story on the show. I think I should wait for the show, but... Um, when we were pinched in jail, him and his people, they were close with John Gotti, um, said uh, his co-defendant, one of his friends told him, flipped. And he thought right away it was Frankie LaCasio. The guy says, no, no, it was Sammy the Bull. And he says, I couldn't fucking believe it. You were my fucking idol. I mean, I, I loved you on the street. We talked about a lot of different things. I'm not gonna talk about that now. And, uh, you know, after a while, he, he was in and out of prison, in and out of prison, in and out of prison. And uh, I'm his idol. I was an underboss. I flipped underbosses, and guys were flipping like pancakes. And then, his, you know, uh, the boss, Joe Messina, flipped. So after a while, he was coming out of prison before he even got out of prison, he got indicted again. And he said, fuck this. I quit. 
he flipped and he's a great guy um, he was stuck on drugs for a while he runs a small rehab he's helping people great guy and I think you're going to see a lot of him around me I'm real comfortable I like him I think he feels the same way we're not going to get married or anything like that so I'm not, don't get carried away here <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be good friends, and I think you're going to see a lot more of him if it's up to me. Yeah, we agree. We loved him. He's a class act. What a yeah. Comment. Yeah. That's yeah. great. You know, speaking of table in the back, um, the long awaited Dominic Sicali is coming out later this week. How do you feel? The, the the video that we did with Dominic yeah yeah good listen we, you waited a while for that you know I don't I don't remember how we filmed it and we did it the the editing part got screwed up and uh, Melissa jumped in and it's been a road for her to put this back together and make it right you know I, I want it right for our people I don't want nothing out there that's sloppy she's been killing herself with this for, for weeks now and uh, I think we have it together and it's coming out shortly you said mm -hmm. good yes. so that's coming out soon and uh, that's why we ha I, we hesitated with it the way it came out the first the first car and stuff it just, none of us were happy with it I wasn't and uh, Melissa was busy with some stuff she was in a personal life and that's why and then I called her she jumped in she jumped on it but it took a weeks to really put it together so uh, it's coming out soon looking back at the clips um, you guys are laughing so hard at the table Dominic's sweating and he's bright red he can't even breathe. Like you guys are cracking up on so much funny, funny stuff. It's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Hey, listen, the interview was great. The only was trouble with technical stuff and that you know so uh, that was the problem but the interview was great we didn't have a problem with that but the editing and, and the technical things that happened uh, with equipment like last week we had some problems with some equipment uh, you know so we don't have you know it, we do have good uh, people around us but these things happen and it takes time to straighten them out so uh, and thank God this is straightened out now and uh, Melissa is going to be on to another project hopefully and uh, we'll see where we're going with all of that. Amen. On that, I'll jump into your first super chat, Sammy. Anika, Sammy, whatever happened to the Jewish? Are you talking about Jewish mafia? Did they disappear? Whatever happened to the Jewish? They disappeared. They did. After the, you know, the Jewish mafia was actually um, uh, Murder Incorporated. They were doing most of the work. There was a lot of them. Maya Lansky and uh, you know all of those guys. There was a lot of tough Jews. Now I remember even during uh, the thing with uh, the, uh, the 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 what that was. Joe Colombo had the rallies. Um, at one of the first rally, I was at the first rally, not the second one where he got shot. But the first one, there was somebody from the Jewish Defense League who gave a speech. So the Jews and the, the Italians were pretty close. But the Jews, I think their kids became more educated, went a different route. And it was smart. And more or less out of the mafia, they disappeared. But we always dealt with them in business and in different you know, aspects of things. Hollywood was infested. A lot of them were in Hollywood. A lot of them were in all kinds of uh, businesses. So, I mean, I always dealt with Jews. And I have a lot of Jewish friends. Um, Steve Lobel, he's in the music industry. They call him the Jewish black guy. He knows every rapper in the world. He came out to meet me one time. We were by the counter. It was black girls came running over. I said, look, they recognize me, but they recognize Steve Lobel. They were, oh, Steve. They walked right by me. I <laughs> didn't even know who the fuck I was. So, uh, you know, they're still around, but we're, we're friends in a different capacity. They're not in the mob, especially now. This mob is totally different. Lily, what are you doing? Lily. That's all we need. We're, we're filming here. What are you doing? In the middle of YouTube live. Okay, Elgato. You know, Elgato is a loyal viewer. He is here every Monday. At yes, he is. Park. Yes, he is. He says, Salute Sammy. Any bank robberies by you in New York? Grazie. When I was young, I did rob a bank. 
and uh, there's a story. I did a video about it. I almost got caught. It was a setup type of thing. And uh, when I walked in, it was supposed to be one guy walking out with a bag. The side door was left open. I went in. And when I went in the hall waiting for the guy to come out, wasn't one guy, it was three guys. And they all went for their guns. I had my gun at it, just told them, don't do this, I'll kill you all. But I, I, it, I mean, it was a weird experience. We faced off, they got down, and I got out and just barely got away. And uh, it was uh, half a miracle. So, uh, wow. yeah. I didn't like bank robberies. Reminds me of the Wild Wild West. All I see is like a saloon and a saloon girl and a... Yeah. You know. Uh, Steve Jackson in the Super Chat. Hey, Sammy, do you recall any other guys in other families with crazy kill rep or kill crazy reputations similar to Jerry Papa or DeMeo or even Albert Anastasio? There was many, many people who did a lot, a lot of work. Uh when I say work murders um, but they were ordered to do it um, I don't think there was many many guys who were kill crazy like Gaspipe or Roy DeMeo or some of those guys in the DeMeo crew um, I, I don't know many of that but there was a lot of almost everybody at one point if you didn't whack somebody you almost couldn't get in the mafia so um, but that changed a long time ago. Um, but everybody in the mafia has done work one time or another. He may be physically not as tough as you or something like that, but he'll shoot you in the fucking head in a minute. So you can't underestimate anybody in the mafia. That's what made the mafia so strong. Every Any one of them could have been a shooter at one time or another, but they didn't always pick you know, certain guys, but uh, certain guys like, you know, th these guys aren't heroes to me, Roy DeMeo or Gaspipe. They became serial killers. I, I can't stomach a serial killer. They get off on killing. Now, most of the guys in the mafia did not get off on it. They got orders, they did it. There's a lot of hits that I did. I turned my stomach, but that's that's the life. You're a soldier in the life. You're given an order and you carry it out. But um, that doesn't mean these guys enjoyed it. Roy DeMeo, Gas Pipe, they just enjoyed killing for the sake of killing. That's not a that's not a mafia. That's not a mafioso anymore. That's a serial killer. And Roy DeMeo was killed for that. Um, Gas Pipe should have been killed for that. But um, he escaped a couple of times. They tried to kill him. Uh, he escaped it. Uh, but they were going to be killed for those reasons. We're not serial killers. And we don't kill innocent people. See, Roy DeMeo was killing innocent people. It didn't matter. He just got off on killing people. So thank God I could say that uh, there wasn't many of those. But there, you know, there's bad people in every single group politicians, cops, the mafia, every place. But I don't I wouldn't count these guys. They could kill, but they weren't serial killers. And uh, so there's a difference. Absolutely. Thank you, Sammy. Ross in the chat wants to know what are you token on, boss? This mm -hmm. a cheap ass cigar with a wood tip. It's black and mild jazz because they don't smell as bad as a regular cigar and they're not as harsh. They're a lot milder. I was smoking cigarettes, I stopped. But I, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I don't drink much, I drink a little bit, but not much. Um, I don't take drugs. This is my only vice. I'm busy, I got a lot of work, or sometimes I got a little bit of a temper, I'll get mad at something, what do I do? I reach for this. It calms me down when I'm talking or I, doing business or whatever but I really want to stop this too but it's a black and mild jazz wood tip they got a plastic tip too either way but I like the wood tip because you can bite on it I don't like putting plastic in my mouth so you know a woman's tongue a piece of wood you know, but uh, plastic no 
Gerard's a little harder to make smile than you. I can make you laugh and smile. Gerard's a little stone-faced over here. <laughs> yeah, my son is a little stone-faced. You want to say hi, Gerard? No, not at all? Okay. Um, where's my chicken? You're 48. You, you're built like a brick shit house, and you're getting shy. You don't want to say hello. <laughs> he is shy. My son is a good kid, great kid. Yeah. Um, a kid. I, I don't know. He's, he's a man. He's a full grown man. He's 48 years old. Um, he's got children, gra uh, gr uh, almost to the point of uh, getting ready for grandchildren. So he's not. But I, to me, everybody's a kid. If they, you know, I'm fucking. How old am I now? 96. <laughs> <laughs> Not a day. You're like 78 going on 16. Yeah, yeah. Where's my chicken in the chat wants to know, hey Sammy, does Chicago still, ha does still have any mafia influence? <laughs> They had a good family. I mean, they had a lot of tough guys. They were serious dudes there. Um, but they were more for themselves. I, 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 you know, at one point, they might have been part of the commission. I don't think so. I've never heard that. But I know when I was in there, they weren't part of the commission. They didn't even call themselves the mafia or a mob. They called themselves the outfit. So they were a little strange. Capone was in New York originally. He got kicked out of New York and sent over there. He did very well. Um, he became a boss for a while. And, uh, but uh, I, I don't know. There's a lot of big names there. It's not, not just Capone. A lot of tough guys, a lot of big names. And I'm gonna be talking about them on my new podcast as well. Awesome, thank you, Sammy. Trey Jones in the Super Chat. What's up from North Carolina, Sammy? How did kicking up to the boss work? Was it a certain percentage every week or did it change? And what happens if a guy was caught not kicking up his full amount? Well, there was no percentage point. You know, common sense dictates what you're doing. You know, you have a game. Yeah, you, you made two, three, four thousand. If you give ten percent, if you give two, three, four hundred, that was fine with them. If you made a big score, uh, like the Lutanza heist, I mean, they made millions. I think they gave Paul Varia from when I heard a package, boom, a million dollars. Now, it's a lot of money, but they made a lot of money. I, I forgot what the number was, 15, 20 million dollars. So they gave him a million dollars. You can't make a big, big score and turn around and give your boss. It doesn't go to the boss itself. It goes from you to your captain. Your captain gets money from different things. He gives a piece up to the administration. The boss decides how much he keeps, how much he gives his underboss, and how much he gives the gonzalea. That's the administration. So it's different all the time. If you have legitimate things, you don't have to kick up. Let's say you own a pizzeria, a restaurant, or a bar. You really don't have to kick up. It's a legitimate business, even though it's always helped by the mafia. Because we always try to go if your man or somebody opens up. I'll give you an example. My daughter opened up a florist. I mean, the place blew up. When it was a holiday, everybody was buying from her. Not everybody, but a lot, a lot of people who maybe would have never bought from her. Um, there was a funeral. She was she was so busy she couldn't even handle it. So we push each other even in legitimate businesses. So we do that all the time. You know, I, I still do things like that. You know, but uh, but but that then my voice was louder. It reached more people, and uh, you're helping each other. That's awesome. Thank you, Sammy. Slick Rick, seven five seven in the super chat. Did Neil take anybody famous out? <sighs> Neil was a tough guy, and uh, he was on the the Mad Hatter. Um, Albert Anastasia. Albert Anastasia. Albert Anastasia. And he did a lot, a lot of work. So did Anthony's father, uh, Fat Dom. Uh, you know, so they all did a lot of work under the, under the Mad Hatter. Who knows how many. This is another guy who killed hundreds of people. So they all did a lot of work if they were under him. 
Uh, and Neil was a tough guy. He, he was a man's man, tough guy, super tough guy. And I know there's somebody did a video just recently about how many th murders Chin committed. God knows how many murders uh, uh, Neil committed. Wow. Thank you for that. Um, Dorico Ferreria, have you heard Joe the Animal Barboza? Have you heard of Joe the Animal Barboza? I did. I did. Um, didn't he make a video and he says he killed 100 people, 200 people, whatever he did? I don't know. Is that the guy they're talking about? He said he killed the, help, the, killed the, help killed the Pope or something? Barboza. Help us out, chat. Did the animal Barboza say he killed the Pope? Who's this guy? Give us a little more context. Um, we'll get back to that one too, Sammy. Um, right. Brian Brown, back in the chat. Very loyal viewer every week, Brian Brown. Uh, salute, Sammy. Two quick questions. One, when Sal Vitale was made, was it common knowledge that he was a former prison guard? And two, could you see a former cop getting made? That happened in Philly that I heard. No, that's in pass against our rules. Um, if we would have known, I said this many, many times, Joe Messina grew up with him, taught him how to swim as a kid. So he knew exactly who he was. Plus, they were brother-in-laws. He knows that he was a cop, a prison guard. And the worst thing you could do, he never told anybody who made him. Not only that, he made him a captain. Not only that, he made him the underboss, and then he made him the acting boss while he was in jail. I met with him about murders and everything else, and this is before he flipped. Um, if we would have known that he was a prison guard and that Joe Messina knew that, we would have killed him, Joe Messina and him, in two seconds flat. I'll give you an example. Years ago, um, there was a guy, he got made with the Lucchese family. Now, a story come out years before, some guy was robbing a bank, he ran out, and uh, this guy grabbed him by the legs, knocked him to the floor, he got a Good Samaritan Award, and all of this shit. They didn't know that, they didn't know it, and they made him. Later on at a commission meeting, it was brought up. He was, didn't send his name around. This is what this guy did years ago. And you make him? Well, they wound up killing him. That's how they clean up their mistakes. You don't go yell the guy, you made the mistake. You didn't do your homework and check this guy out and send his name around. And then they, they were embarrassed, disgraced, and they wound up killing him. Gas pipe and uh, and Vic. So uh, no, you can't make a cop a next cop. I mean, you could have even in you know my sister, my sister Jeannie, my older sister. Uh, her husband died. My brother-in-law Angelo, and um, she was loose and she went around and she you know went to clubs. She was dating, and she dated a cop. And she sent word to me, because she knew how I felt. And she said, uh, I'm dating this cop. Is that a problem? I said, no, it's not a problem. Here's what it is, Jeannie. You're my sister. I love you. I will always help you. I will not attend any parties with you and him. Um, he can never come to any of my family functions. And if you're with him, you can't. Um, and just, that's your life. If that makes you happy, then stay with him, be happy. Our relationship is over. You're still my sister, I still love you. But we're in two different worlds. Make believe I'm living in Earth and you're living on Mars. We can't communicate. We can't meet. We can't do anything. But if you're in trouble, you could always send me a message to my other sister, Franny. Tell her I'll hear about it. I'll make sure that some way or another I'll cure your problem or I'll help with your problem. 
but there'll be no more participation. But I'm not stopping you. you you're not in the mafia. You're not in anything. If you want to marry him, all well and good. So that's what I would do. I don't know. There's some people who are related. Matter of fact, my wife had a cousin. Her cousin Danny was a cop, became a cop. And we did the same exact thing. I liked the kid. I always knew him. I loved his father, uh, Irish guy. Uncle Danny, I used to call him. He's passed away. He helped me get a job when I was a kid. He's a great guy. But uh, when his son became a cop, our relationship was done. And I had no hard feelings towards him. Listen, you, if that's what you want to be in life, go ahead. You know, it's like almost to the point where you're gay. You can be gay, and I love you for being gay. I just don't want no part of it. Did he get arrested for being a dirty cop? He got arrested for being a dirty cop, but uh, it really had nothing to do with me. I didn't try to help him. I didn't try to do anything. That was his business, yes. And the cops he got involved with was a big case, big name things. Matter of fact, after I had flipped, John Gleason mentioned to me, he was a prosecutor, he said he he was one of the prosecutors who handled the case, and he says he's like a, a nephew of yours, true marriage. I said, yeah, he was a nephew, true marriage. But uh, when he became a cop, um, we're not related, we're, not, we're nothing. So whatever you're doing in your cases, if you're asking me for whatever, I'm not interested. Yeah, it reminds me of um, Breaking Bad with Brian Cranston. He was the meth dealer and he couldn't, his wife's um, sisters, had, like the brother-in-law was a pretty high up detective and- They pull away. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what they're supposed to be. Listen, I know a lot of cops, and there's a lot of cops who are good guys. Tommy Day, for one. Uh, Michael Vecchione, he was a prosecutor and a cop. I know FBI agents. There's a lot of good guys. But we're in two different worlds. Now, they can't, shouldn't want to deal with me either. What are they going to do, take money from me? So then they're a dirty cop. We don't want that. Now, there's a couple of cops who were killing for the mafia, but that's this fucking gas pipe in them again. I actually knew one of them. One of them, his uncle was a captain in our family. Even his, his uncle didn't bother with him that much anymore. This little, uh, I forgot it, huh? Epicedo or something like that. Epilito. Lou Epolito, so his uncle was a main guy, but they were separate. So you can have your life, you can do whatever you want, but um, we can't have that kind of a relationship. If your brother's a cop, you have a relationship. Now you might spill the beans even by accident. We don't want that. So. Thank you, Sammy. Elgato is back in the super chat. <coughs> Sammy, I watched the Salvatore and I loved it. The special effects, the wig and beard were all amazing. I had fun doing that. You know, they had me with this wig and beard, so I'm, you know, I'm trying to do a disguise. And I'm driving around on a cart in, a, what is that, an Ace, Ace Hardware store, and I'm like spying on this serial killer. I'm supposed to go after him, so I'm watching him. So we're at, when we're doing the scene behind the scenes, <laughs> so I'm supposed to drive through this thing and and watch him where he's going. <laughs> I crashed into the into the thing five, four or five times. I couldn't even drive this fucking thing. Every time I hit the gas, it took off and I hit a, hit the. <laughs> it was crazy, but we had a, bl a blast doing that. You know, when I come out and uh, all these things, and. Uh, a lot of guys and people said, and that is people telling me they want to see me in another movie. Um, I, you know, I'm not an actor, but I had a, I had a blast doing it. Um, and if it's about my life or it's about you know serious gangster shit, I guess I could play the part because I, I feel natural doing it. But I can't play another part, you know, like a love story. And maybe I could play that. I, I don't know. I, I would try that, but I don't think so. Uh, you know, any kind of a, a weird story. I'm not an actor. But a crime story, 
I maybe could play a part in it or, or something. In that one, I was actually one of the main characters, right? Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I had fun doing it. I really did. I had a blast. And then, you know, the funniest thing is, I had called up, I'm on pro, parole, so I called up my probation officer. I says, my judge and people are going to see me in a movie with a gun and all kinds of shit. I'm shooting people. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. So uh, she says, you know, well, well, it's not a real gun. So I said, no, it's not a real gun. So she came down and took pictures of the gun and everything. And she says, okay, I have it on record. This is the gun. I took pictures of it. You're going to have, a, there was a, a, not a, not a parole officer, but there was a security guard. He was registered. He's there. He checked the gun every day, you know. So uh, they allowed me to do that. I had a blast doing it. It was nice. I was carrying a gun. I pulled it out. I'm shooting the guy. <laughs> I was having a blast doing it, to tell you the truth. I was reliving my life while I was doing it. So I guess that's why I was halfway decent. That's awesome. You know, they and they say art imitates life, imitates art. Right, right. And uh, the guy, Joe, who played the serial killer, he's a friend of mine. Uh, now, he was in The Sopranos. He did a write, some writing and stuff. He was fantastic. I think he stole the show. Mm -hmm. He was great. I mean, he just played a psycho. And uh, believe it or not, in that thing, we hang a woman. And who do you think this woman is? It's Melissa. <laughs> she works for me. She, she she didn't work for me at that time. So what happened is a friend of mine, uh, Louise, got uh, Joe because Louise's brother's an actor in The Sopranos. He knew Joe. And that's how I wound up getting Joe. And then Joe talked to me about Melissa. So there was this girl. She was going to get hung and this and that. So she did this thing. They, they act. Uh, uh, and, and then I look at the video. And I looked at the video of Melissa. She was great. I loved the, way, the expressions on her. I said, oh, she'd be great. And uh, that's, that's the girl. If you watch that, that's Melissa. <laughs> we hung. So she's a beautiful woman and, and she's a great actress. She, she did a great job too. She, her and Joe, I think, stole the show. They were amazing. They were, they were amazing. Fantastic. Really were. Yeah. And they helped me along as I was going. I remember Melissa running around telling me, Sammy, that's great. You know what you got to do? And they were talking to me behind the scenes, which really gave me some confidence in doing stuff. And, uh, you know, I missed that. I, we, we had a blast. You know, when we had great people on the show, you would have Gerard, right? You would have a lot of days and we were putting food out and stuff. My grandson, Nikki, was there. So we had a blast doing it, really Karen did. Karen was in it? Ka Karen was in it, yes. And she was, she was giving me an interview. Uh, the guy, Casey James Smith, uh, who was directing, he was a good director. You know, we broke up for whatever reasons, but he was a good director. Um, his wife was in it in, in a coffee scene. Beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, it's actually, I know her father, but we, we had a blast with the whole thing. You know, a lot of laughs, and it came out pretty, pretty good. There was a really emotional scene that really got to me when um, you and Karen were talking on the phone in, in jail. And it was so real. It, it was like you guys were really in there. Like, I felt that. My heart. And you got to ask Melissa because she was there. When I was doing that scene, she did it so perfect, it broke back memories. I almost was in tears. I, I had a, I, I stopped. I stopped the whole show. Stop. I, I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I walked away. They cut that out. But I got it to that point. I couldn't go any further. And I just, I had to walk away. I couldn't look at her and do it. I, I just, uh, it just blew me away, that scene, doing it, you know. So it, uh, that wasn't acting. That was real. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. Because I remember doing that in prison with her. Uh for real yeah so where can they go see Salvatore Sammy you, you can go see the Salvatore for free on our thing dot TV mm -hmm. you're gonna love it it's five episodes um, we're gonna do follow-ups on that and shows and have things like that done too so I'm talking about that that's my son right dropping <laughs> dropping things and blowing up things yeah we'll do a show he'll crash the car <laughs> 
<laughs> the apple doesn't fall far, Sammy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the driving. Right. I'm just kidding, love you. Ryan Brown is back in the super chat. Um, Sammy, did you ever run into Crazy Sal DeSarno who killed a cop named Cecil Sledge in 1980s in Brooklyn? No, I don't think so, but uh, I understand with a name like Cecil Sludge. I mean, I, now I know why he killed him, so, but I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know the whole thing, no. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Linda Hoogkamp, um, with a generous envelope, a few hearts. Linda from Albany, New York. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Benjamin Linus with a very generous envelope for you, Sammy. No question, no comment, just to his weekly kick up to you. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate it. Again, let me tell people, I mean, I, I appreciate these things. I take things, that what I get from these things, I try to get better equipment, more equipment, and you know, you know, a lot of these things, doing these things are expensive, especially now, the remake, if we do the remake of our thing, and it's not an if anymore, it's in my head, I wanna do this. I'm excited to do it. It's more information, uh, and I'm gonna. It's be more factual. So, uh, and and all of these things, when you you know when you press like, when you press subscribe, all of these things help. It helps when I'm talking to these people in Hollywood heavyweights. Again, I, I'll explain it again. You know, oh, okay, you're Sammy the Bull, but what do you have? You know, these movies I am doing uh, this stuff that stuff all right what's your numbers they always want to know numbers so when I have big numbers I tell them my numbers are pretty big by the way I have uh, 99 million 900,000 views on my uh, on my YouTube channel and I got 558, almost 559,000 subscribers. But the more the merrier, and the more it pushes me to get things done with them. They, I get their attention real quick. And if I got their attention, because a lot of you guys tell me, make a movie, do this, let me hear you. And this is what helps me get them to do it. And I already got them, but uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, the more the more you get, these studios want to know that when you go to a studio and you're going to put it out, they want to know numbers. So yeah. it helps. Absolutely, guys. He is doing all the stuff you guys are asking for: the movies, the shows, everything. It's the writers' strike and the actors' strike that's really holding up development. So yeah. keep us in your prayers. Keep Sammy in your prayers. Let's move right. on. Right. And I, I, you know, I'm already signed up. These movies are going to come out. That's a given, but it's the writer's strike right now. And it's not just writers, it's the actors, the actresses, everybody. I think people are getting a little tired of it. I think uh, my friend Patrick Big David did a video just recently, right? Yeah. Complaining that, you know, this is hurting a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of people, or not big actors, and there's a lot of people who put together a movie and they're all out of work. It's already from May 1st to now. It's 90 days or 90 something days, whatever it is, that's a lot. These people ain't bringing home a check. And another thing is, when you're not willing to go to work because you're on strike, so you can't collect unemployment either. So these people are laying dead for three months. And they, I'm not saying they're broke, broke, but uh, yeah, right now I, I'm sure that it's getting tough for a lot of those people. So I wish these people would compromise end this strike the people who want to see the shows uh, we've been in, with this pandemic locked up we want to see entertainment some good entertainment some new entertainment and uh, all you guys who are on strike i'm not saying you shouldn't be but remember they want it they want things too everybody everything you know when you're on strike compromise it's negotiations the studios have their position. You have yours. Both of these compromise. And if you need me to come down, I don't with unions all my life. I'll sit down with you guys and I'll show you how the fuck to do it. 
I'm going to make you guys an offer that you can't refuse because you're holding up my fucking shows. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> With the horse head and all. I know. Big producer. <laughs> yeah. Well, the horse head is for the for the head guys. Yeah. I'll give them the horse head. No, we're nice to those guys. We're nice to those guys. No, my son just gave me a dirty look. Because he, <laughs> he had horses as a kid. We had horses. My son loves horses. So he just gave me a dirty look. All right, we'll give him a, a what, what? A moose head? <laughs> <laughs> A bull head? All right. No, I love bulls. No, leave it alone. All right, come on. Jay Marie, your loyal, loyal viewer. Jay Marie, what's up? Hey, boss and crew. I was so busy, but I just wanted to check in with you in the super chat. Listen, I love you. I heard your name mentioned a bunch of times, and uh, my love to you, baby. Vinny Detroit with an envelope. No question, no comment, just his weekly kick up. Vinny, see, it's guys like you, it's guys like this. You know, uh, I don't ask for envelopes, it's, but it's people like this are so loyal and such good people to want to help you succeed. And I got people trying to knock me left and fucking right. It's just out of jail. I don't even answer them. I won't even mention their names here because you know who they are. It, because it's jealousy, it's envy. Because they they can't be like you or whatever. They don't have the people. Now I'm gonna tell talk to them for a second. Douchebags, cunts that you are. You have to be real. You have to love people to be loved. I love my people. I love what I'm doing. I'm not greedy in any aspect of it. And I tell the truth. I'm not here bashing people. So when you're doing that, it should be so understandable for the people who follow you that that's all you do. And you want to bash me or you want to bash... Now, now uh, what's his face? Uh, Anthony came on my show. Now, he didn't get much, but he got a couple of people. You're meeting with the devil. I'm surprised at you. Now, this is Anthony trying to make a living, trying to get ahead, thinking that going with me, doing it, I got a big following. Like those numbers I just told you. So, and I'm putting it on the table to help him promote a show. Instead of saying, God bless Anthony, good move. I hope you build your subscribers. I hope you do this just like I'm saying to him. And he knows it. Why would you knock these things? If you have nothing bad, see people like you, uh, well, let me let me get off it because I'll start getting a little mad. I don't want to be mad. I want to be happy with the people. Again, back to you, guy Vinny, and who just sent an envelope. I appreciate it. So let me stay on a good note. We love you, Sammy. That's yes, and I, you, I know you love me. And you're a classy word, um, Algato. Back in the super chat. How do you? Do oh, here we go. How do you deal with envious people? Grazie. You know, with envious, jealous, envious people, they're the worst people in the world. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of stories, but and, but, but I'm going to answer you, Algaro, is that they're like fucking an annoying fly. Little flies always around you or a mosquito. Just brush the fucking thing off. They're meaningless. They're meaningless. So I'm going to give you a story. Um... I had a brother-in-law, um, and he came out out here. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna hear static with this, but let me say it. The, we go to an Italian pizzeria, and there's a couple of Italian kids coming from New York. They came here to make great fucking pizza. Word spread around, and there's a line when you go to buy pizza, right? So we were in line. So he says, what do you got to know? Look at them, two fucking morons. Look at the success, they're making money. Look. So I say, it's not luck. The kids, look at them. They're both working, flinging pizzas, getting the boxes, smiling, talking with the people, and the pizza is great. It's not luck. They're working hard. Anybody could do that. Then why don't you do it? You don't have what they have. They're showing love to their customers. They're showing respect to their customers. They're making great pizza. People love them and love the pizza that they're making. It's not luck. 
It's hard work. They're busting their asses, two kids. But see, jealous, envious people, they'll always find an excuse to knock other people. Whether, ah, he got lucky. You know, I, I told a friend of mine, if I make it big in Hollywood, everybody's gonna, well, not everybody, but those people, they're gonna say, look, he got lucky. The first guy who tells me I got lucky to my face, I'm gonna slap him right in the face. I've been busting my fucking ass seven days a week, 10, 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week for a long time. Money problems, I got out of jail, I had $430 in my pocket. Not a penny more. I didn't even have clothes. When they when I went away, they took my clothes. I got nothing back. I didn't have a car, I didn't have clothes. My kids, my son, my daughter, my wife got me sneakers, t-shirts, jeans. I had to wear. I went on food stamps. I did a million things. I went to Social Security and applied for Social Security. I went on lines with a lot of poor people, Mexican people. I felt like I was in Mexico online with these people. They were broke. I was broke too. And I know what it is to be that and to fight and struggle. And I'm struggling. I still struggle a little bit. Um, I'm getting better and better all the time. But that's hard work. I didn't get here by accident. I didn't get here because I'm Sammy the Bull. Nobody gave a fuck in Hollywood who I was. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 I heard of him. A killer or whatever the fuck he is. They don't care who you are. Like I said, they want to know numbers. What did you do? They want to see that movie. Oh, you acted in this movie? Let me see it. Oh, this guy really will try. He tries any fucking thing. They, they, they got, you got to earn respect. You got to earn love. It's not luck. So yeah, something you could get lucky. Go bet the fucking lottery. I bet it. Maybe I'll hit the the the, the Powerball tonight or Mega Ball tonight. That's luck. But everything else, that's not luck. I'm gonna give you Anna. I'm gonna stick her in this. She went to college for well, this Hollywood bullshit for four years. She came out. She went to work. Then she went back to college. This year she finishes to become a psychologist. She came to work for me part-time while she's going to school and taking care of her kid and her family. That's that luck. That's hard work. In three, four years, I, already everybody in Hollywood knows who the fuck she is. In three, four years, she's gonna be a beast. She's get in touch with guys who wanna reach me, big people, they don't even wanna reach, they reach her because she's legit. She works hard, she treats people right, she, she will respect and everything else. Doesn't hurt that she's good looking and has a nice figure. I can't, you know, I don't have that no more. So, but she, that's, that's, that's it. Oh, oh God, oh. Uh, you, if you know people who are jealous and envious people, leave them out of your life, walk away from them because they're gonna always steer you on the wrong road. Have respect. Listen, I think the world of Joe Rogan. The guy is a powerhouse. It, there's no luck. This guy was doing fights and inter interviewing people. He's a, he's a beast. He's got 13, 14 million fucking viewers or, or subscribers or whatever it is. He's a beast. I want to be on his show. People like Anthony want to be on my show because I got a big following. It's a cycle. And if you got good people who would help you. Now, I, I got word to friends of mine uh, that I think Rogan would sit with me. But right now he's booked for months and months and months on people that he's going to go, well, you know, I, w I wish I could go on a show right now. Um, I have a football player now coming on. Should we talk about his name? Wolf. Huh? Was it Derek Wolf? Yeah. He was in the Super Bowl on the defense. The guy's six foot eight, a beast. 
Now, who hooked that up was Brian from Fighter and the Kid. Who, who be, I went and did a thing with him. Me and him wound up to be good, good friends. Um, really good friends. And, and, you know, that's how it works. It's what you do, how you treat people. I tell people over here, I give you my word. That my word means something to people. I don't look to b rob people, beat people, lie to people, bullshit people. You have to do all those things. So I've got to, if you know people who are greedy or selfish or, you know, all of those things, jealous, envious type of people, you have to get away from those people in life. They're not going to help you. They'll bring you down to their level. You're sitting there and, oh, fuck Sammy, he's, you know, he got lucky or he's full of shit or whatever you want to say. I mean, what, what, what good is that? What are you in life? That's why I don't even answer them. What, what, you're a termite, a cunt. And that's all you could do is talk about me or talk about Michael Franchise who's successful. Talk about yourself. And I could talk about these people, but I, I don't bother. I don't. I really don't. Someday, maybe. So, I think that support. answered that question a little <laughs> that bit. That was amazing. You got a lot of support in the chat saying, the more I listen to Sammy, the more I fall in love with him. And, and I love you guys. I really, really do. I love you guys. You know, uh, with, a, with a passion. My son, I was asking me how many people were on. I told him I think we had 12 or 1,400 people. I don't remember the number. And he said, wow, that, that's good. You get 200 people is good. So you're getting 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, 1,400 people. How many people we have? 793, 790, oh, 800. Yeah, about 800. 800 and change? Good, good. And those are good numbers. And those are people who support you. That's how it works. It's not luck. They enjoy this. They have an entertainment. They enjoy it. They love me. I love them. That don't just happen. I could be a greedy, selfish fuck, and uh, it doesn't happen. So, but um, all right, God, let's go before I get emotional. Mm -hmm. now. Benjamin Line is back in the super chat with another very, very generous envelope for you. No comment, no question. Thank you, my brother. Dale has a really interesting question. Um, he said, I love you, Sammy. Uh, if JFK wasn't assassinated, what would have became of the mob? I think, uh, you know, we had the father. He was, uh, he was uh, a bootlegger, hooked up with the mob, and hooked up with Hollywood. Um, I, I don't know what would have happened to the mob. I, I don't know it would have got bigger, stronger. But they broke their agreement between him. It was it was more than him. It was uh, Bobby Kennedy, and he went against the grain in uh, with the CIA and politicians, and and I believe very very strongly about the vice president Lyndon B. Johnson. I think they were all involved. I'm going to do, uh, listen, I have a lot of information. So some things I think, some things I do have some serious information. So I'm going to do an interview, uh, not an interview, a show about the assassination of uh, President Kennedy. I've been talking about it with people. Some people, I you know, told them what I know, and they were blown away. They said, Sammy, when the right time, do it. Do the show. So I will be doing the show, but I'm not going to disclose things I know. But um, I don't know what would have happened to the mob if they were. I know if they didn't break their word, the mob would have flourished. The country would have flourished. Um, he went after politicians. He went after the CIA. He should have listened to the CIA. He should have invaded Cuba. We wouldn't have had the problem. And listen, by not invading Cuba, did he help them all these years later? They're driving around in a fucking 1957 Chevy. 
I don't even know how the fuck these things even still ride. That country became poverty. When the mafia was there, it was a haven for people. Um, what's that? Uh, the Muslims have that island where it's free, everything is really fancy. Dubai. And, huh? Dubai. Dubai. It was like a Dubai. I mean, it was heaven for people who wanted to go party and stuff like that. It was flourishing. And uh, Castro came in, turned it around, it fell apart, we didn't invade. They're still broke. They're still neighbors that are a wreck. I mean, they're, they're really poor. And you know what scares me about that? It happened over there. It happened to, what's that other oil country, the, uh, the Hispanic? Uh, Venezuela? Venezuela is a mess. I saw trucks pulling up. People run into the truck with big plastic things. They were giving them food. This was one of the rich, this had more oil than you could count. This was a rich, rich country. It fell apart. Rome, in Italy, Rome fell apart. God forbid, but I think this country is doing the same thing. And I know people will say he's crazy. We were not going to go running around for food or this and that. The politics that are kind of want to get into politics, but the politics that are going on now, this country is going down every single day. So, uh, and I do that on um, the bullpen. I talk about it. So I'm not going to talk about that right now with this. But I hope to God that it, that same thing Rome doesn't become the United States very true thank you Sammy we have one last super chat from Curtis sending love from Shippensburg PA I have a question did you have any dealings with the Pittsburgh family I love you and your crew your biggest fan Kurt I had uh, uh, feelings towards uh, anybody who was a made guy in the country and every family. I understand they were a small family. They conducted themselves well. I never had, I know Phil Leonetti was a friend of mine. Nikki Scaffo was close to me and told me that they were good people. They did business with them a lot. I, I never did business with them. I don't think our family did business with them. I'm sure some of the old timers might have, uh, I'm not, now I'm an old timer, but uh, some of the old timers when I was younger knew some of them maybe. But I heard it was a great family, very well run. Uh, Nikki Scarfo and Phil Leonetti said they were good guys. So I could only take that word. I never really did anything with them. But, uh, you know, they, mafiosos love, they don't want to take a city or a thing down. They don't want to drain it. They want to make money. I, I call it, I want to put my beak in, my beak and take a little money out of everything I do. You know, and, uh, but I don't want to hurt things. Like, I don't want to go into somebody's business and hurt it, like you see in some of these mob movies. I want to help it. I want him to make more money. And my beak now, I become a pelican. My beak is a little bit bigger. And I'm, I'm eating with him. And I've, that's what I've done in business all my life. Back in the day, I still have Joey Madonia. We had 200 carpenters. He owned it. It was his business. I joined him. We made a ton of money. He's still sending me fucking less letters. So I didn't leave. I didn't rob my partners. I didn't beat them. When I left, we broke up. Uh, he continued with it. Great guy. And uh, if this gets to you, Joey, I mean, we had a good relationship. When I left, I didn't shake you down. I didn't try to shake you down. I shook your hand. If you have a problem, call me. And he went on with his business. I became a little bigger in the mafia. That's why I left. But, um, you know... I don't know why I'm going into that. But. Uh, we have Benjamin Linus back in the super chat with another very uh, generous envelope. You're the best, Sammy, and don't ever stop making stuff. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this till the day I die. My my theory is, um, I don't want to die in bed. I don't want to die in a rocking chair. 
I would like to fall down in my office or the studio or someplace and drop dead on the floor. I'm going to do this until I can't do it no more. Um, and uh, I'm 78, and mentally I think I'm 48, if that. And uh, I flight with broads. I, I do all kinds of weird shit. So uh, and I and I enjoy it. I enjoy playing. I enjoy talking. I enjoy work. You know, I'm a little. I get a little tired sometimes. I can't. It's hard to keep up with all of it. But uh, I'm doing it while I can do it. I'm enjoying it. I'm not complaining about it. I, I enjoy it. I love it. I couldn't think of another thing to do in my life now at my age. I really can't think of another thing I w would want to do than this. I can't wait to sit in a movie theater and watch the Johnny Keys movie. My son told me that this morning. He said, Dad, I can't wait for this strike to be over. Me and you'll be sitting in a movie theater. No, son, no, me, not me and you. I'm going to be at the preview. So I'll probably be sitting with a girl. <laughs> the premiere. <laughs> at the premiere. Okay. So probably Anna because Anna was very essential in that. But we'll see. You know, speaking of gals, Callie in the chat is saying, make my dream come true and take me on a date, Sammy. Ooh. I think we need to send a search party for Betty Ann. Yeah, think. yeah. <laughs> now they'll be arguing. People will be arguing. Yeah, yeah it, w it would be my pleasure to meet you and have dinner with you sometime. And, uh, you know, how old is she anyway? I'll Kelly, send us your info. <laughs> Ricardo, send Ricardo your info. Yeah, info, pictures, date of birth, every fucking thing. I mean, because, I mean, if you're a little young, bro, I'm up in age, you could hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> But what a way to go. So I'm good. All right, guys. Listen, let me go get my pampers, and I'm going to go. <laughs> I got. I don't have pampers. Um, I don't wear that. But anyway, I'm going to wind it up now. I'm going to get into another meeting, and which is great. So I'm going to give my normal, no disrespect, man, because you know I love you guys. But adios, motherfuckers.